Let's do something a little fun today. Let's talk about the camera manager in Unreal Engine. So we have an entire camera system which we can use uh, a lot of different stuff for. We have a third person character that is pre-set up for us. We've got this camera boom which helps us doing a lot of very neat and very nice things. But we have a built-in camera manager that can do a lot of cool stuff too. So today let's just take a quick look at some of the basic stuff that we can do with that. First and foremost, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new blueprint class, come down into all classes and look up camera manager. And there we want to make a new blueprint class of player camera manager. And we'll call this uh, cam am for camera manager uh, tutorial. Now, if you have a custom game mode like this one over here, you want to come into that game mode. You're going to figure out what your player controller is because this is going to require you setting up a custom player controller as well. I don't have one at the moment, I don't think, so let's just make a new blueprint, I call that new player controller, that's fine. And in the player controller, we have a bunch of stuff that we can do. Up top, it already says the player manager camera class. And there we can select the camera manager tutorial that we've just made. So now that player controller is going to use that camera manager, and our game mode is set to using that player controller. So that's all good now. Let's go into our camera manager for the tutorial here. And we've got a couple of functions to overwrite. So most of the functions here are just actor functions, but we've got a couple of ones like blueprint update camera. This allows you to more or less just override the transform and I believe field of view of what your camera is currently doing. The camera on the player character, that is. And then there's a couple of things to do with uh, photograph mode as well, which is an entire video in and of itself, which I might do in the future. Uh, for now, let's just have a little bit of fun with blueprint update camera, because this is probably what you're going to be mostly using this for. Uh, we'll set the return value to just always be true, just to have this uh, be simple. And in here we can set the camera field of view, the camera rotation and location in any way we want. Now, if you don't do anything with this, uh, what we're going to see is when we play the game, the camera is going to be at 0, 0, 0, because what we're doing is we're overriding the camera's position in our camera manager. So uh, we can even set this to like, let's set this to like 1000, 1000, 1000, something like that manually. And let's also set the camera field of view to 90 degrees so we can actually see anything going on at all. And there we will see that right now we are hovering uh, right about there, which makes uh, sense. <laughs> now, important to note is that while our camera is hovering here in uh, midair, if we go into our actual character and into our follow camera, uh, which is set to a very weird angle at the moment, don't mind that, uh, it's not there. So what this is doing is it's not actually changing the physical location of your camera in the world. It's just taking the location that you feed into it and rendering from that as if the camera was there. That's important because that means that we can use the camera location and add an offset to it without then impacting the camera location with that offset and creating like a recursive weird loop. So let's do that. Uh, we have this camera target here, which is the actor that this manager is working with. It's just a generic actor reference, uh, so we can uh, cast this to our blueprint third person character, and from that we can uh, get the camera down there. And from that we can get the world transform. It's important that we do the world transform and not the uh, local transform, because this is going to set it in world space. Which is very useful, because that means that if you want to make some more complex logic than we're doing right here, your camera can be moving and set to positions independent of your character's own movement, which is uh, usually quite tricky to do otherwise. So let's split the structure pin on the wall transform. And now let's just put that into there and the same with the rotation. So now our camera will just be functioning as a normal camera because it's getting overwritten by the values it already has anyway. But if we go into here and we say, hey, this um, location, we're going to add another vector to that. Uh, let's make that vector like a Z250. It's going to have the same camera location, but just Z250 higher up. So we're now looking down at our character a little bit more. But the camera boom and the camera itself still function the same way. 
So this is just using it offset to render our position. Now, since we have this follow camera anyway, we can also uh, probably get the field of view. There we go. And put that into our new camera field of view just to have it match as well. And here's where we can start doing some interesting stuff, right? Because we can just get rid of this uh, for now. What I want to do is I want to make uh, a rotator instead. We can do that with combined rotators because rotators are a little bit more complex than just normal vectors. So you need to have this separate function for it. We can put that into there. And then the rotator, we can promote to a variable. Uh, so let's call this rotation to add. And you might be able to see where we're going with this. And if not, uh, you will in a moment. So let's go back into a third person character. I already have a F key, which is usually the key I use for testing because I never map anything to the F key anyway. And when we press this, we're going to run a timeline. And on that timeline, we're going to get player camera manager, which is just a node that the engine provides you with, which is very, very nice. And we'll cast that to our camera manager tutorial. Realistically speaking, we should cast this on begin play so we don't do a dynamic cast every single uh, frame while this timeline runs, but I don't really care about that right now. And now that we have a reference to our uh, camera manager for the tutorial, we can set the rotation to add. And let's split the structure pin so we have the X, Y, and Z rotation separately. And we're going to lerp between 0 and 360 degrees, which is going to make a circle. The timeline will uh, add a track to for a float, and that will be the alpha for our timeline. So that will start at 0, 0. And let's say that it is a two second timeline, which ends at a value of one. We can put that into the alpha and then we can take any of the axes that we want. So in this case, I think like, let's do a barrel roll, which is the X rotation. Uh, so let's put this into the X. And now when we press the F key, our camera should do a barrel roll. So F key and there we go. Let's put this in play from start actually because otherwise it'll only play once. Uh, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with this, right? Uh, you can at the same time make something uh, like a second flow track here, which does other interesting stuff. We can uh, add a key, and we can say this uh, starts at zero, uh, 0, then add another key, which will be at 1, 1. And then we can add yet another key, which will be at 2, 0. And this will be a graph that goes up and down, as you can clearly see. Uh, again, we can do stuff with this, like uh, making this, instead of linear interpolation, we can make this user interpolation. If we do that for this one too, it has a little bit of a smoother curve to it. And what we can do with this one, for instance, is just having a little bit of fun. Uh, getting our field of view and adding to that, you can see where we're going with this. A variable so call this field of view to add that's going to be our new camera field of view and again since we're not actually impacting the field of view from the camera component itself we're just adding or subtracting from or to it we can very easily set these kind of things up without worrying about messing up our actual initial settings for our camera we can always easily revert back to that by just setting the values for these to zero so let's uh set field of view to add and we'll use a loop for that too uh, between zero and like minus 35 and this will also while we're doing that barrel roll uh, do a zoom in let's make sure to use the actual new track that we made uh, for the other alpha so if the previous example didn't make you motion sick enough uh, this is now also going to be zooming in and zooming back out as it does the roll so <laughs> This might seem a little bit worthless and useless to you right now, uh, because I'm just having a little bit of fun and playing around with this. But of course, you can very much use this to make a system with a couple different camera positions. Well, let's just get rid of uh, the timeline and stuff for now, because that was just for a little bit of fun. Uh, if we just take this directly, and we come back in here, and we again make something very similar, uh, adding a vector to our actual location for the camera so uh, let's make this a variable uh, position to add 
we can then set the position to add and for now what we'll just do is we'll do like a uh, flip-flop so let's say uh, we set this to uh, 100 and this to minus 100 and of course you can do much more complex systems with this uh, but this is our default camera and then we can say we want the camera there and we want the camera there now and now it's just going to go back and forth between the two of them this is just a basic idea of what you can do with that one function again there's an entire set of functions to deal with uh, photography mode which i'm not going to go into right now this video is long enough as is that's the camera manager for unreal engine it's kind of nice it's fun to play around with and a very big thank you to all of my patrons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page and a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons sergey thomas 